Hi guys, back in chapter 10, facial devices and equipment. Um, this section is 10-15. And what we're going to do, this is the procedure section. So we're going to go through procedure 10-1 on the use and care of your steamer. Now I'm not going to go through the implements and the materials with you. You can read that on your own. But I'm going to go through the steps. And step one is uh, procedure 7-1. It's the pre-service preparing the treatment room. Go ahead, click on that, read that again on your own. Um, but So I'm going to move on from there. So step two is place distilled water in the designated container through the fill opening at the top of your steamer. So on your steamer at the top there's a little knob and you, you'll remove that and then you'll go ahead and place the distilled water in there so you'll pour it in from your gallon jug and then check to make sure that it's not too full and that the level is with the maximum fill line don't go over that top red line okay because otherwise it'll spit and sputter now Step three is perform an equipment pre-check and adjust the position of your equipment to ensure the client's safety and ease of use. So before you begin your facial, always position the steamer where you want it and adjust the height. Okay, so you'll move the arm however you want, want the height of it. Don't position the steamer in the nozzle uh, direction right at your client when it's heating up because the steamer could sputter hot water onto your client. So I always turn it away towards the wall or somewhere else and then I wait until the steamer has demonstrated a safe and effective steaming prior to directing it onto the client. Okay, step four. This one again you're going to read the procedure 8-1 on pre-service, prepare the client for the treatment. So go ahead and read that on your own. And then step five, apply a makeup remover to an aesthetic wipe or a cotton round and then remove the client's makeup. And then apply a facial cleanser and massage that into the skin. And then step seven, remove the cleanser from the skin Step eight, use a two by two aesthetic wipe or a cotton round moistened with toner and then remove any residue. Now, I know we don't use toners with the skincare line that we use at Oliver Finley, but I will tell you there are companies that you do have to use a toner. I, when I was a student, we had to use a toner three times in our facials. So again, it depends on the company. Okay, step nine, apply eye pads or goggles. And step 10, turn on the steamer. If your steamer has a secondary option of ozone or vapor, then don't turn on that secondary switch until steam is visible. You could burn out the little electric uh, thing inside the arm of the steamer that for the ozone. So wait until steam is coming out of your steamer, then turn on the ozone if you're going to use it. I personally only use ozone for people with um, acne, and that's after I've done extractions. And I want to have that um, ozone, that extra oxygen on the skin to kill off any bacteria in the follicle. Otherwise, I don't ever use ozone, okay? And I don't like to use it over product either because it can oxidize the products. So again, that's just how I do. So do your own research and, you know, do what you think is right. Now, chap uh, step 11, sorry, when the water is boiling, add the steam and, and the steam is visible that's where you slowly adjust the arm closer to the client, okay? And then step 12, you want to keep the steam. This is really important. Keep it 15 to 18 inches away from the client's face. 
and then place that steam further away if necessary so that it's not too warm or too hot on the face. So what I do is I put my hand right above the client and then I feel when this, you know, the temperature of the steam and then I know if it's going to be too hot. If placed too close, then the steamer can cause overheating of their skin and possible irritation and burning. Okay, step 13, always check the client's comfort level and ensure even distribution of the steam on the face. So again, uh, you don't want the steam going up, up the nose this way because then they can't breathe and then they'll take a deep breath in and that makes them cough and they're choking and coughing and then they don't like the steam. So one thing you wanna do is either take the steam this way or this way. This is the way I usually do. I direct the steam down the face um, and that's the way I like it. So re reposition it if you need to, to get even placement across the face Sometimes estheticians will have steam just going down one side of the face. So ask the client, do you feel this evenly on your skin? And then step 14, never leave the client unattended while steaming as water can spray out and burn your client. And don't over steam the skin as well. So steaming should only last five to 10 minutes and it should be adjusted for less time if needed. Uh, some skin types, I don't ever use steam, like cuperose, telangiectasia, sensitive skin, rosacea. I never ever use steam on those skin types, but then again, that's me. It is contraindicated definitely on rosacea and cuperose. So step uh, 15, so when you're ready to discontinue the steam, what you're going to do is move the arm up, turn it away from the client, and then go ahead and turn off your steamer. If you don't, then if you turn it off while it's on, it can spit boiling water onto the client's face. So step 16, continue with the next step in your facial and close out this procedure. Step 17, remove the eye pads or goggles, apply a moisturizer, and of course, the most important thing, sun protection. Okay, and then step 18, uh, that is the post-service procedure. So go ahead and read that on your own. And 19 is another one. It's the service cleanup and preparation for your next client. You guys read that one as well on your own. So let's talk about cleaning and disinfecting our steamers. Uh, you want to add two tablespoons of white vinegar, okay, and you fill with the distilled water to that top red line, okay. So, and then you're going to steam it for about 20 minutes. Now, while you're doing this, guys, do not turn on the steamer and let it heat to steam and then, or I mean, turn on your steamer, sorry, and let it heat to steaming, but don't turn on the ozone, okay? No ozone while you're cleaning it. And then let your machine run, like I said, for 20 minutes, okay? Or until your water level gets low. Make sure it stays above that bottom feel line to avoid the jar from breaking. Now, uh, turn off your steamer, let the vinegar set, let it rest, in there in your machine in your unit for about 15 minutes now because vinegar does have a pungent smell you want to clean your steamer like in a utility room away from your treatment rooms open a window if possible and then when performing maintenance to keep the fumes from traveling to other areas of your salon what i do is i just wait till the end of the day when nobody's in there and then clean the steamer. Um, I, I wouldn't do it at the beginning of the day because it's gonna have that smell uh, and it does smell pretty bad when you're cleaning those with the vinegar. Now, after your machine cools, uh, what you're gonna do is strain, uh, drain the steam jar, 
completely. And then you're going to go ahead and fill it back with distilled water, back to the fill line, the top one. And then let your steamer heat to steam again. And then operate that for about 10 minutes. Now, if there's still an odor afterwards, then drain the unit again and repeat that process. Just keep putting distilled water in the uh, you know, container uh, on the steamer and then running it through your steamer until the odor is gone. All right, there is a caution here. Do not allow caustic vinegar and water solution to set on the heating coil because uh, while you're steaming or without steaming immediately, don't let it just sit in there. And don't let it sit overnight. It will corrode the copper coils. Um, I do know that one from experience. Years ago, I had an esthetician student of mine. She uh, was cleaning the steamers. It was a Friday. We always cleaned them on Fridays. And it was a Friday, and she was cleaning it, forgotten, got in a hurry, forgot, and left the vinegar solution in one of the steamers. And uh, when we came back on Monday, it had literally corroded all the chrome off of that coil heater or heating element and it ruined that steamer so make sure that you don't allow that to sit on there if you're not going to use it immediately then don't use the vinegar so only do it when you're ready to clean it and then there's a note that says there is usually a reset button on your steamer for additional safety in the event that the steamer runs out of water. If your steamer is not running, check that reset button before you call for help as well. And it's usually on the back of the steamer. And then the reset button is ordinarily found, like I said, on the back. Um, my particular one, I think it's underneath. But anyway, so check for the reset button. All right, guys, that is the end of this little procedure, and I'll see you in the next one.